Now, I'm out here doing this video outside, and the last time I did a video from outside, the camera overheated. Uh, now, if you mix that with the topic that we're about to go over, this is a topic that have got so many Ravens fans heated, but I'm here to throw a little more fire on it. But anyway, it's slow season, as we talked about. Um, but these lists, y'all know how I feel about the list. I, I love looking at other people's lists. And this is another one that I would not have seen. Uh, if not for Mr. Adam Schefter, uh, because he retweeted it, and it is from the 33rd team. And the list, uh, it is the top 25 NFL players, 25 and under. Because, you know, again, with these lists this time of the season, um, or this this time of the off season, they get creative, they start putting the little age brackets on it, they put, uh, you, you know how it goes. They, they come out with a million lists, but we look at, at them all and we love them all. Um, but this one, this one we're only going to focus on uh two of the top three players on this list and, and we can go down the whole list to see who, who all it involves but um i'm here for two of the top three yeah this feels like a dream and you know just what i mean you see my boy he like gotta made it how to made it well he's a fan and he like the ravens like the ravens and you know just what i mean So, uh, let's just read the first paragraph from the list so you can sort of get a flow for where this is headed. Uh, one of the most challenging but most rewarding tasks in the NFL is to find the perfect balance of youth and talent on your club's roster. The 33rd team consensus tiers identify and group the most talented youngsters in the NFL today, uh, except those players drafted in 2022. Uh, 11 of the 33rd team's analysts and writers choose, chose from a pool of 75 players, 25 and under, to generate their list of the top 25 best players considering positional value. That's important. Considering positional value. Um, but it gets, it gets good. But anyway, just looking at the top three on the list. Um, the top three players are Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson. And that is the order that they are ranked in. Number one. Justin Herbert, number two, Joe Burrow, number three, Lamar Jackson. So I know that just the way that this is ordered, I, I know it's going to have a lot of people set off already, but that's not even my biggest gripe. Um, let's just read uh, the, as far as the tier one, the brightest young stars. Um, the young trio of Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, and Lamar Jackson spearheaded the rankings. Since taking over for Tyrod Taylor in his punctured lung in week two of the 2020 NFL season, Herbert's play has been nothing short of stellar, breaking the NFL records for most passing yards and touchdowns in the first two seasons of a player's career with 9,350 yards and 69 touchdowns, respectfully. Now, my opinion... Justin Herbert is a baller. I, I loved him ever since I first watched him play in the NFL. I was like, man, this dude is nice. He is nice. But this next sentence is what really has me scratching my head of how they place him over somebody like a Lamar Jackson. Here we go. Still, Herbert's win percentage is below 500 regardless of his performance. That should change this season, especially how the Chargers revamped on defense. See, now it's like they, it's not a backhanded compliment. It's actually a, it's actually a, um, what's the word? What's the term? It's sort of like, it's a diss, but they try to like make it a positive. Uh, oh yeah, his win percentage is below 500 regardless of his performance, but that should change this season. So it's like, they telling you, hey, what needs to be said? Cause that's the end all be all for me. That's the most important thing when it comes to your quarterback. And I know so many people love to say, oh, there's no such thing as QB wins. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, really? You must not know Ravens football then, especially under Lamar Jackson. You must not know it if you say there's no such thing as QB wins. Because QB wins are certainly, oh, I got a meeting at one. QB wins are certainly a stat. They, they certainly are. Um, because your quarterback impacts the game so much, so much. And in my opinion, it just again, Justin Herbert is a ball. I love Justin Herbert. He is nice, man. But can we say that he's a better player 
than Lamar Jackson is, the top 25, under 25, whatever. Can you say that he's a better player than Lamar Jackson is if this dude ain't even cracking 500 in the win column? Seriously. And again, I, I gotta keep saying this because I really, I really like Justin Herbert a lot. So this ain't no, this ain't, I ain't here to diss Justin Herbert at all. Because I love his game. But can you really, especially with all the weapons that he has every year. And again, you, you see all these records that he's broken. He's broken all these offensive records. The passing yards, passing touchdowns in the first couple of years. I think, what, it was Dan Marino that had the record or something like that. But he broke that. But what has that gotten them? Has it translated to win? He ain't even been in the postseason. He ain't even been in the postseason. So, it, like, if, if, if the conversation started at, all right, postseason, and th then, then everybody, oh, one and three, Lamar, okay, all right, cool. But we, we talking about regular, he is not over 500. He ain't over 500. So, if there's somebody, especially a quarterback, if it's a quarterback and he ain't he ain't over 500 the conversation stops for me the conversation stops for me because you compare these guys to, again just the talent Ravens they got tight ends over the uh the Chargers I don't even remember who Chargers tight end is but I know who Mark Andrews is and he's like that one of the best tight ends in the league but receivers <laughs> Keenan <laughs> My way. Yeah. Running backs. Uh, well, last year, Chargers had it. Overall, because, um, of course, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, but again, they were out last year. So, Austin Eckler, they, Chargers had that over the, the Ravens last year. But with, with, with Justin Herbert and the weapons that he has had, he got that over Lamar. But for Lamar, his impact on the game. His impact on the Ravens. Again, no Lamar. No winning. No winning straight up. And I, I love how um, Shady McCoy, when we talked about this a couple videos ago, how Shady McCoy put it, where they were going over him and Joy Taylor and, and Sam Acho, or Emmanuel Acho, it's Emmanuel Acho. They were going over top 10 quarterbacks. Man, Wacho said Lamar's like, I think he said like eight, something like that, like seven, eight, something like that. But Shady, I think Shady said like, he definitely top five. I forgot what number he put him at. But his point was, he was like, when you look at these other quarterbacks and you look at the weapons that they have, if, if they're removed from the situation, a lot of backup quarterbacks can come in and win. They can come in and win with, with the weapons that the other teams have provided their quarterbacks. But with the Ravens, if Lamar's out, <laughs> Ravens are out too. They ain't winning. And he's not just saying that. We saw that last year. We saw it last year. So, I just, I just can't with it. But you know what? Let's look at what they said about Lamar Jackson. Um, for Lamar Jackson, they said he has been one of the league's premier passers since his MVP campaign during the 2019 season. Jackson has already solidified himself as one of the most dynamic quarterbacks in NFL history, surpassing Michael Vick for most games with at least 75 rushing yards. Jackson is also the first quarterback in NFL history to record multiple games with three passing touchdowns and at least 100 rushing yards. That's pretty good. But anyway, uh, the Ravens dealt with many season-ending injuries last season before week one. Yeah, we know. Um, the Ravens are primed to make a 49ers-esque jump from missing the playoffs to vying for their conference. And Jackson almost single-handedly fuels their offense. I'm glad somebody knows it. I'm glad somebody understands. I'm glad somebody gets it. Because that's very important to know. <clears throat> that last sentence. It's like these last sentences, these one-liners, they, they get it. Uh, Jackson almost singly, single-handedly fused their offense. Yeah, we know. Um, but yeah, again, this, this, this is not to, to pit Justin Herbert and Lamar Jackson against each other, but... It's just why th this list, I just, I can't. But anyway, let, let's go down the, uh, the, the the other top 25 on this list. So number one is Justin Herbert. And I'm not going to read every single detail for all of them. Number one is Justin Herbert. Number two is Joe Burrow. And let's, we can read Joe Burrow since he's right in between Lamar Jackson and, and, and Justin Herbert. <coughs> Burrow broke, <coughs> ooh, excuse me. Burrow broke through with an unheralded sophomore season after suffering a gruesome leg injury in 2021. 
Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, T. Higgins, and fellow top 25, under 25 receiver Jamar Chase. Oh, he should definitely be on the list. For sure. Jamar Chase is like that, as we know. Um, they formed one of the most potent offenses in the league en route to a Super Bowl berth and subsequent loss at the hands of the Rams. Nonetheless, the Bengals are one of two teams that made the Super Bowl with preseason odds of at least 150 to 1. The other being, ironically, the 99 St. Louis Rams, who enjoyed Kurt Warner's breakout season. Despite their loss in February, there is plenty to be excited about in Cincinnati. And that is the truth. I know a lot of Ravens fans don't want to admit it. They want to say it's luck. They want to say this and that. Bengals, they made it to the Super Bowl. They made it to the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow's first four year, first full year starting. They made it to the Super Bowl before the Baltimore Ravens did. They they made it. Yeah, they lost, but they made it. And they made a lot of off-season acquisitions that leads you to believe that they will be uh, very competitive this year once again. So Bengals, they came out and they did their thing. Um, so they are they are going to be a force to be reckoned with. Oh, this games are going to be fun. I, I, I can't wait. I can't wait till like all this stuff is real, even though I've been enjoying the offseason like crazy. I, I actually wish, I know some of y'all are going to hate this, but I actually wish the offseason would slow down a bit. I really do. Because it's been going by so fast. It's been going by like a little too fast for me. Um, but anyway, let's get through these, th these last guys on the list. Uh, Justin Jefferson is number four. So Lamar Jackson, number three. Justin Jefferson, number four. Nick Bosa, number five. Jamar Chase, number six. Kyler Murray, number seven. Ooh. Uh, Michael Parsons, number eight. Tristan Wolfs, number nine. Ten is Jair Alexander. Eleven is Fred Warner. Oh, he's under 25. I know he's that young. Uh, Twelve is Jonathan Taylor. Jo it's crazy because I was just watching my guy, um, uh, TTB, Trust the Bank. Um, and shout out to McConn and Josh. And I didn't know that, uh, Jonathan Taylor got drafted the same draft as J.K. Dobbins. I didn't know that. Yeah, 13 is Rashawn Slater. 14 is Minka Fitzpatrick. Minka Fitzpatrick? He's, he's 25 or younger. I ain't know that. I feel like Minka Fitzpatrick been playing forever. He played for the Dolphins and the Steelers. And anyway, uh, 15, Derwin James. 16, A.J. Terrell. 17, A.J. Brown. 18, Denzel Ward. 19, D.K. Metcalf. 20, Patrick Sertans, uh the second. 21, C.D. Lamb. You. 22, Max Crosby. 23, Raquan Smith. 24, Devin White. 25, Jalen Waddle. Um, so it's a nice, like, nice little top 25 list. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to talk about uh, those, uh, those top three. Because um, that was my biggest uh, concern. Those, those top three. Because, uh, I, I really just, not even the top three, but um, one and three. I just, I just didn't, I just didn't see and I don't see how you could put Herbert um, over Lamar, especially because what does it come down to in the NFL? Is it about the pretty numbers or is it about winning? You tell me. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Well, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. Shout out to Graven.